Hey guys, welcome back for another video. Today we're doing a performance test on using a Synology 1019 Plus and probably others, but I can't say for sure, with a Plex server application and installing an SSD to use the cache functions. Now my theory is it's not gonna make much of a difference, maybe with thumbnails, but that's about it. Since running a Plex server is 99.99% .99 just sequential reads and occasionally writes when you put stuff on it. Right now I'm in the middle of a function. I'm copying a new movie that I have not watched and we're gonna have two copies of it. So I'll be able to test before and after, both fresh, never hitting the system at all. And I wanna see what effect the thumbnails have as far as just scrolling through the menus. I'm making a copy here of Schindler's List. It's about a 93 gigabyte 4K Blu-ray. So out here in the living room, this is all on gigabit ethernet. Everything is wired. I've got a switch in my cabinet that breaks out to the Apple TV, the switch and the receiver, and nothing is on Wi-Fi. So I just use the Shield for Plex. It's literally the only thing I've installed. And after that copy's done, we're gonna fire it up and we'll do our baseline testing. And if you're wondering why I'm standing instead of in my home theater seat, it's gone. She gone. Yeah, wanted an upgrade, something that fit me a little differently and we got a different color. And the new one will be here in just a few days. Same configuration, love seat, two full recliner, power, headrest, all that kind of good stuff. Looks fairly similar, but with some key differences. And I'll show you that when it comes in. But I love the old one. Man, it, it looked sweet. I mean, it matched these two chairs, which are also full power recliners. I love these. These are Ikea. I don't know if they still sell them. They didn't sell very well. And when Ikea has that happen, they typically kill the product. But man, these things are awesome. Just not the right size to put in the center. So anyway, got the files copied. So I'm going to fire up Plex. And look for recently added... Okay, so there's the copy I made. That's cool, it says Schindler's List copy. I wasn't sure if it, was, it would pick it up as the actual Schindler's List. So I'm gonna save that for when I put in the SSD cache and that'll be test B. But right now, what I wanna do first is look at how thumbnails populate. So right now you can see them load in. If it's not preloaded, as you go through, and I've scrolled through this top to bottom several times. It always does this as you're just scrolling up and down in the menu. You see them pop in. Obviously, it's very fast and you're not waiting or anything like that. And it's a little bit slower on Wi-Fi, but not much. So, I mean, this is tolerable. When you scroll fast, they disappear, though. Other programs don't do that. Uh, for example, Infuse, what that does is cache all of these images on your device, which makes a big difference. Plex is doing it on the server, so it's streaming all of these real-time as you're scrolling. And I get it, I kind of like the way Plex does it better because you can update the metadata on the server and it pushes it out to all devices. With the way Infuse does it, if you have a phone, a tablet, Apple TV, whatever you're viewing it on, every single one of those has to be updated if you've made any change, so it's kind of stupid. but. Just scrolling through here, this is how it looks. You can see how fast they pop in. When I stop, it's pretty much all populated, but you still see it for sure. I mean, it takes a fraction of a second. And just scrolling down or up one line at a time, you see them on that top or bottom row coming in. But by the time you're looking at it, it's loaded. So it's not a functional problem, but it'd be cooler if it was faster and these were always loaded. I don't know if the SSD cache will help that or not, but that's what I'm hoping for. So now let's find the original Schindler's List and play that, just see how long it takes. That's really the only thing that this is going to affect. It's not gonna have any difference with the actual movie playing. It, mm, no, it, it wouldn't even with fast forward or rewind because cache is only going to affect data that's already hit the cache. That's why I don't think this is going to make any difference as far as how fast it's going to launch. So we'll launch it and play it. And you can see it's super fast within a second. 
So I don't think there's much room for improvement there. And this is as big as the files get. It's just under 100 gigabytes and it's a very high bandwidth 4K Blu-ray. So that's pretty cool, but I'm, I'm more interested in how this is gonna change than anything. So let's put in the SSD and test. So I'm not sure how accurate this test or meaningful the test, I should say, is going to be for a Plex server, but we can run a check here. If you go into the SSD cache and click the advisor, you can see ahead of time how much a cache may or may not help. So here's the only volume I have. And yes, for those asking, I have switched to SHR from RAID 5. That way I can upgrade individual disks in the future when I need to. So let's go ahead and run this. And I did this the other day just to see what it would say. So I don't have to run it again, nothing's changed. And we can see that it only recommends a cache size of almost 200 megabytes. So pretty much nothing. Now, I don't know if this is from the last time the system was booted or the last time the volume was created, but either way, this is only a few days worth of data. Haven't played many movies, just haven't had the time. So you can see that this is basically all that's been accessed on it. If you're using it as a file server or you know a database or anything like that where it's hitting stuff constantly, this is probably going to be a much larger number. But in any case, this is here so it can give you an idea of what to expect. Here's a sneak peek of the new sofa going in, by the way. You can see it's like a dark charcoal. I think it's gonna be a really cool match in the room. This is just Photoshopped. So the first thing we have to do to prep the system is turn it off. And we just do that by holding down the power button until it beeps and flashes, and that'll automatically shut down the system and store the disks. It just takes a moment. It'll spin them down one at a time, park them, and as soon as the lights go off, we can unplug. There we go. And then on the bottom of the unit are the two access panel covers. Doesn't matter which you use, you get two of them. They're both NVMe and you can populate them with whatever SSDs you want. It really doesn't matter. You don't have to put anything super fast in there because whatever you put in there, any NVMe drive is going to instantly saturate the network, which is only gigabit ethernet. So all you're really concerned about is getting the most bang for your buck and putting in the sizes that you need. But with two slots, you could put in two terabytes very inexpensively if you catch them on sale. So we just open the slot and they're toolless. They just have a tab here. The drive will go in, snap down into place. So we just align the tabs and push it down, slide the big tab back and we're secure. Now we can plug it back in, power it up and go back into the control panel. So now we can go back into storage manager, back to SSD cache and we don't have one created. We're going to go ahead and create one and we want a read only cache. It sees the new SSD. We'll do max. Yep. It'll erase it and it'll go ahead and format it, create it and should be good to go. Now it's mounting it to the system. And that took about 45 seconds. Okay, now we can go ahead and see what difference it makes. Let's fire Plex up again. All right, now this is the copy. So I've never launched this before. It should be exactly like the other one within a second of playing. And it is, okay, no shock there. Now the way cache works is you have to have accessed the data ahead of time. It doesn't do anything for first time loads. So going through these thumbnails here, this is going to be identical because it's just hitting these for the first time. So, yep, we can see them pop in. It's fast. No big deal there. I'm going to scroll down to the end here. Now what we're looking for is as we go back through, is there any difference? Do they pop in 
Or do they stay? Ah, oh, now they're staying. Okay, so it did make a small difference. Well, let's see. Let me make sure that each page here has a chance to load. So when you scroll really fast, it won't catch up. So if you skip and you're going really fast, it only loads what's visible to make it as fast as possible. So you can't just scroll through the whole list at once and have them all load. So you kind of have to do this just to get it done the first time. But after this, they're all at least hit once. And I want to see if I can then scroll fast to any particular spot. I think it's going to make kind of a difference because up here at the beginning, you can see the top row is pretty much instantly loading. Now, there's, there's still a delay there. As you're scrolling, it's not showing them real time, but as soon as the screen stops, they're loaded. They're not popping in like they were before. The whole line's coming in at once, where before you could kind of see them. So it's not instant. It's still not like some other apps where it's locally stored on the streaming device, but it's a small difference. Okay, well, there you go. If you have a spare SSD, throw it in. Why not? It doesn't hurt anything. But definitely don't purchase one in hopes that it's going to do anything. And it doesn't do anything to playing the movie itself. That's just streaming the data straight from the server. Absolutely nothing to do with cache at all. There you go. Hope this helps. Hope it answers everyone that's been wondering if cache matters for Plex. No, it does not. See ya.